Good morning folks, it is Thursday morning and we're going to come together and read God's word this morning. We're going to read 1 Thessalonians in chapter 4. Um, so let's hear God's word. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you in the name of the Lord Jesus to live in a way that pleases God as we have taught you. You live this way already and we encourage you to do even more. For remember what you were taught by the authority of the Lord Jesus. God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honour, not in lustful passion like the pagans who do not know God and his ways. Never harm or cheat a fellow believer in this matter by violating his wife, for the Lord avenges all such sins as we have solemnly warned you before. God has called you to live holy lives, not impure lives. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching, but is re rejecting God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. But we don't write to you about the importance of loving, but we don't need to write to you about the importance of loving each other. For God himself has taught you to love one another. Indeed, you already show your love for all the believers throughout Macedonia. Even so, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you to love them even more. Make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business and working with your hands, just as we instructed you before. Then people who are not believers will respect the way you live and will not need to depend on others. Now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. I tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. First the believers who have died will raise from their graves, then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will all be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. Amen. Wow, a chapter again packed full of so much. Um, so just two thoughts. One, how we live our lives. Um, speaks to others. Paul pleads with the believers there to keep on living a holy life uh, and talks about how um, people will then, who are not believers will respect the way you live and will not need to depend on others. Just that recognition that as people we do watch one another, we do observe one another. Um, we're nosy, aren't we? Um, we say we're interested in people, we like to know what's going on, we're just nosy. Um, but that's good for us as followers of Jesus because it means that we know people will be watching us. But it also puts pressure on us to live our lives the way God has called us to. But we know that none of us are perfect. So whenever you do get things wrong, don't beat yourself up. Simply bring it to God and ask him for the help to live, it, to live your life the way you should be living it and just to hand it over to him. Knowing that as people watch, it will be a real witness to them. It will speak to them. It will help to show them God and how much God loves them and cares for them. But the other huge thing in this is about the hope of the resurrection, as it's called, as it's entitled in the New Living Bible. Just reminding us again that death is not the end. That death is a doorway, a gateway to be with God forever. And talking about how whenever... Jesus returns, those who have already passed away, who have that personal faith, will be raised to new life. And then those who are still living on the earth will be caught up to meet with them all together in the heavens. You know, it just again reminds us that you know we will meet again. Um, when we put our hope and our faith and trust in God, we do have that heavenly home. And this earth is not the end. There is so much more waiting for us. So much more to this life. And it's really sad to think that for a lot of folks, they just believe that, well, I just live this life and then I die. Whereas the truth of the Bible is we have 
a world, a realm waiting for us that we can't even start to imagine. Somewhere where we can be with God forever. That's the wonder and the glory of having personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So yeah, two immense things this morning. Two huge, well, a huge challenge about how we live our lives. And then just a big reminder to us. Especially when we're feeling down in the mouth, when we're missing a loved one. And this time it's, it's probably harder than most times uh, because of how the regulations are and how we, and how we grieve. But just a reminder that whenever we have a loved one who has personal faith, just how we know we can be reunited with them one day because of our faith in Christ. So yeah, may that spur you on today. May that encourage you. May it also encourage you to do the first thing, to live your life as a witness for God so that more people may come to put their faith and trust in Christ so that more people can realise that and have that reassurance um, of resurrection one day. Yeah, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, again, thank you for this day. Thank you for your goodness to us, keeping us safe and bringing us through the evening uh, into this another day. And Lord, thank you most importantly for your word and what it teaches us. Today, Lord, yes, it will be hard to live our lives for you. There will be, there will be struggles today. There will be temptation. Um, there will be opposition. And all of these help us to surrender it all to you, to ask you for the strength to live the lives that we know that we can't, so that our lives may be a living witness for you, not bringing glory to us, but pointing people towards you, towards your love for them, towards all that you have done for them. Father, thank you. Continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, um, for joining with me. I know at the start of that chapter it said finally, but that was just typically Paul. It's not finally. There's still another chapter in First Thessalonians. So we'll do it tomorrow morning, Friday morning. Um, then again, I'll take a break on Saturday, the way I've done before. And then we've got our Sunday service, which will be streamed. So yeah, come back and join us again tomorrow morning. Same time, same place. Take care and God bless. Bye.